again, and welcome to Radio Free HPC. This is where we talk about supercomputing, high-performance computing, and other technology topics. I'm your Toastmaster, Rich Bruckner from Inside HPC, with my co-hosts, Dan Olds from Gabriel Consulting, and Henry Newman from Instrumental. Now let's get to the show. There was a topic that came up that related to our previous discussion about benchmarks. A fellow by the name of Winston Saunders, he's an Intel employee, and he's a relatively well-known blogger. He's part of the Green 500, and he put out this post that talks about a new, uh, what he's calling a new metric uh, called the Exascaler. And the purpose of this uh, is to look at, for Exascale, we're looking at developing a, a machine that would run at something like 20 megawatts and would run one exaflop of uh, sustained performance by the year 2020 or so. What he wanted to do was come up with something that would measure our traction towards this. And are we making progress or are we not along the lines that we'll need to to get to that goal? So he came up with this thing, and it's Exascaler combines the top 500 results with the green 500, and it looks at performance and efficiency together. And he did some interesting charts here. I I brought this up to you guys because I know you like to follow trends, and I wanted to see what you think. Well, for me, I don't know. The green 500 essentially is based on the same benchmark as the top 500. It's based on Linpack. And in digging into the green 500 a little bit, out of the 500, 231 of the scores were unique submissions to the green 500. So 231 sites out there use the green 500 methodology and metrics and submitted scores. 83 of the scores were calculated from the energy usage metrics that that were turned in with the top 500. And that's not, those aren't turned in with every top 500 submission from what I can tell. But then there's 186 of the green 500 that were derived, which I assume means that they took the configurations and interpolated based on existing uh, knowledge that they had about those. So I'd like to see a bit more effort put into standardizing how we measure for power, what it includes, what it doesn't include, how it's done, that sort of thing. Kind of along the lines of, of what they're doing with the energy efficient HPC work group. And, and I would add power and cooling, Dan. Cool. Yes. And you're exactly right, because cooling is absolutely a component of this. So if you don't measure something like storage, you're not really measure or, or cooling for that. You're not really measuring what it takes to run the system, right? Yes, and, and I go back to the question that we've asked before is, is the measurement of today, WinPack, is the appropriate measurement for an exascale computer system and what percentage of peak are we getting today out of peak from Linpack? And what per- sustained performance are we getting out of our petaflop systems? And are we going to get an exascale on Linpack and get a tenth or a hundredth of the sustained performance versus you know, of what we're getting today? Oh. Good questions. Well, you know, we know some of the ratios for today's systems, right? So uh, if, if there's, there's something like 20 systems that run at petascale on the current top 500. I think the number is exactly 20. But the number of applications that can run at that level, uh, you could probably count on one or two hands. One right? of which is Linpack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. probably probably the most popular one is Linpack. Yeah, and the other ones are probably high energy physics or Gaussian and things like that, right? So certainly science, but as far as percentage of efficiency, I've seen a lot of numbers, a lot of numbers in the 90s, Henry, on certain things, and other ones, they're really happy with 40% on some exactly, of these hybrid Richard, systems. Exactly, Richard, what I'm right? saying, my, my yeah. point is, you know, let's say our ratio is anywhere between 40 and 90 percent today for the you know, best case applications. What if we go to Exascale using Amdahl's law, 40 to 90 percent isn't that good? What is it for something like uh, your high-powered laptop there? My high-powered laptop isn't doing, you know, HPC computations. It's true. The point is I'm not spending hundreds of millions to billions of dollars on my laptop. Somebody else is because I'm amortizing it across millions of people on the planet, you know, for I think, getting what I need. 
I think Dan spends more on his laptop than anyone I know. Yeah, I think so. And and actually, some of the things that I do, like video rendering and even some audio processing, that can push it pretty hard. I can push eight cores quite a ways. We'll see how the new 12-core Hydra 1A system does. And what's your bottleneck, Dan? Is your bottleneck memory bandwidth, cores, I.O. bandwidth, bus speeds? What, what's, what's your bottleneck on that laptop for what you're doing? On the laptop, I'm not so sure. On I bet it's memory bandwidth. It very well could be, but for the, the kind of stuff, the performance-oriented stuff that I do, it's probably the GPU and could be software related too. Uh, but getting back to this efficiency thing, and we've had this argument before. I think we had it in New Orleans, uh, Henry. Uh, I think we were talking about either SSDs or GPUs. I think it was GPUs, and you were making the argument that, hey, the efficiency percentage isn't there. My counter argument was, but more is more. Three more is more, but you can't afford the power to not scale. To yes. Move up to exascale. So if there is no more to the more, if you've if the curve has has peaked and turned downward, sure, absolutely, it doesn't make any sense at that point. But if you're getting more, and now we're getting all confused with using more 500 times. But if more is truly more, if the cost is reasonable, if the cost slope stays about the same, then it's a decent deal. Uh, it totally is, but uh, t- tell me when that's happened in our industry, the cost slope, when you get more for a single architecture. The initial slope, bad. Slope going onward, better. I agree, onward, better. And actually, if you look at it's kind of interesting. I ran some numbers on Linpack for, for the uh, largest supercomputers versus even my home computers, and cost per per flop is pretty close even on um on like roadrunner and on the k computer right there in the ballpark are you talking list prices or what they actually shelled out for the thing well public publicly disclosed prices so who knows whether that's higher or lower yeah publicly disclosed prices are probably pretty close to what the, the price they paid for it was yeah I'll put a link up to that on, on our site, too. But, Dan, remember, for some of the systems you looked at, the publicly disclosed price includes 30%, 20% of that storage costs. You hadn't mm. thought about that. Yeah, and there might be a service contracts in there wrapped together. or And even there's external tape. networking. and. But, uh, but on the other hand, though, for those beauty contest installations, you've got the vendor eating an awful lot of cost in order to make the deal work. That's true. Well, let me, let me put it a different way. Yeah. How many of the top 10 supercomputer deals do you think were profitable to the vendor that did them? Zero. That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. But back, back to this, this, this idea, is this, is this exascaler, is this on the right track to start bringing together uh, metrics so that we're not just measuring uh, one dimension? In my mind, it's, it's, yeah, I don't know. I'm torn on this because in some ways I'm thinking, yeah, it's kind of a cool graphics thing that he did and that's okay and something is better than nothing. But, you know, we've got the green 500. We have the top 500. Let's worry about getting those measurements right. You know, let's get the, let's get the power yeah, the, the, measurement submitted with every system. The baseline, two, two garbage in yeah. numbers doesn't make a better answer. I'm yep. not saying the top 500 or the green 500 is is garbage, but there are there are flaws in both those measurements for getting to exascale. It is the best we have today. Do we need to look at something new? I don't think anyone would argue that we need to do a lot of work there because a machine that runs Linpack at exascale might not be that useful if that's all it does well. Right? Yeah. It, I mean, if you just got to break it into a hundred separate machines after you run Linpack, uh, how long certainly. is it going to stay up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a big yeah. problem. And that brings up something that maybe we want to discuss on a upcoming show: the virtualization of supercomputing. Is that as these systems get bigger and bigger, there's no single workload that can really use the entire system, and it's something that. Um, 
I think we're going to be talking about more in terms of how to virtualize these things with low overhead. And, and there's a lot happening in that in that event too. So I, I think I know just the person we could bring on to talk about that. So let's let's table that discussion and bring virtualization back because I, I think there, there's a lot of interesting things going on there, Dan. That's it for this edition of Radio Free HPC. Thank you for listening, and be sure to check back often for new episodes. Also, check out our website for more content, links, and a place for you to let us know what you think about the show. We're at RadioFreeHPC.com. Thanks again. We'll be back with another exciting episode real soon.